I'm going to go mute on Zoom. <clears throat> hey, I'll be here helping in, in chat as well. Thanks, sir. You going to paste the thing in? The zip? Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the Art of Trade Station. I'm David Russell, VP of Market Intelligence at Trade Station. Today we're going to be talking about candlesticks and advanced alerting, some of the powerful sort of uh, technical um, tools we can use on the platform. First, some important information and disclosure. The following presentation is for educational purposes only. All symbols and trading ideas discussed by the instructors are for demonstrational purposes only and are not recommendations. This presentation is not an offer or solicitation of any kind in any jurisdiction where any trade station affiliate is not authorized to do business, including but not limited to Hong Kong and Japan. Active trading is not suitable for everyone. Options and futures trading carries a high degree of risk and is not suitable for all traders. Please read the disclosure information or the electronic disclosure available on the trade station website. Okay. Well, before we move forward, I want to just mention that we do have um, a fall summit. Um, it's called the Level Up Fall Summit, October 8th through 10th, um, and you can sign up for it. Let's just put that link in. We can just share that link um, in the chat. So, folks, we're going to be sharing everything to the chat. Please don't use the QA um, function on Zoom. Um, use the, um, the chat to ask questions. So right now, we just pasted in a zip file, which contains some, some tools in it, and we're also going to put in a, um, this link here. Let me just... Anyway, all right. So um, first, I want to show you how to load the custom tools that we shared in the zip file. And then secondly, um, I wanted to, um, I'm going to kind of go through um, um, some of the basic principles of candlesticks and then show you how to scan for them and alert for them and some other stuff we can do with moving averages because we've created some kind of interesting tools for moving averages with moving average crosses and some other things like that that you probably haven't seen before that might be kind of interesting to, um, to check out. So first, if you follow the zip file that has just been shared with you, this is what you will get. You'll get a zip file with three files inside of it. This is, um, is a PDF that is basically all the slides I'm giving you. So you don't have to worry about taking notes. There's a lot of things in here when I show you how to do scanner, a bunch of steps. Don't worry about writing it down. It's all in this. Um, this is a PDF. Secondly, um, there is an ELD, an easy language document file, that contains a series of indicators. So you want to load this um, and import these indicators into your TradeStation platform before you open this file, which is the workspace. So if you have TradeStation open and you double click on this, you'll basically see something like this. And there's five special indicators that, are the, that we're going to be using. We're going to use a lot of other indicators that are already built into your trade station platform so they're not in this file so i already have them so i'm going to hit escape but you would hit finish and it would it would go through and tell you about how it's importing them and then finally once you have that done you want to double click on the trade station workspace which is what we're working with right here okay so um before we even get started i want to mention some of these tools are pretty interesting and I have these tools on my own personal uh, workspaces running in a series of different places. But, um, you know, a lot of these um, I have actually, you know, I continue to find um, some different interesting things. And in fact, for I, I should just mention um, where you can find my work. I'm a VP of uh, Market Intelligence here at TradeStation. But if you go to TradeStation.com, we have at the top um, this link to Insights. And this is the Market Insights blog that I write. Um, you know, for for um, for trade station, I also um, do these trading ideas over on Trading View, which is an outside charting service. So a lot of things I publish go here as well. So I'm always looking for different things involving charts, you know, potential chart patterns and setups. So I'm using a lot of these tools all the time, and I wanted to just share a few that popped up recently um, that I thought were kind of interesting. One of them. So right now in this workspace, this has a radar screen a scanner, and it has two different charts. You'll notice that there's chart linking. So if I do one chart here, like Apple or something, that it changes both charts because that's green and that's green. And if I click on a symbol, it's the same thing. So these are all linked together with the green symbol linking. So anyway, I was just 
you know, um, preparing for the webinar today and looking at different um, patterns that were coming up. And I wanted to share um, this one in particular that was interesting. Ulta Salon, U-L-T-A, had a good earnings report. The stock had kind of run into the earnings report. It was overextended. So it gapped way up and they just hammered it back down. Let's pull back considerably. So this is a 21-day exponential moving average, which a lot of people use as a short-term momentum um, you know, uh, signal. And so this came up today for two reasons. One, it was holding the 21-day exponential. It was touching it. And that's one of the things you're going to be able to see in the radar screen I'm sharing. And then secondarily, it had an outside day. So you'll notice on this, the way this is set up, since we're talking about candlesticks, inside and outside days, the white is an outside day, the blue dot is an inside day, and the, the golden cross or this yellow cross is a doji. So those are three of the candlesticks that are set up to demonstrate on the chart. This one is kind of interesting to me, and this is the kind of pattern that is potentially interesting um, you know, for, for, for trend following um, and some of the things we're looking to do. TJX which owns Marshalls and the, and the, um, the retail. Um, this one came down and has touched the 50-day moving average. And it's just kind of interesting that this touched the 50-day moving average a few days ago. One of the tools I'm going to share with you guys, actually can find stocks several days after they touch the moving averages. They're kind of lingering. They might not be touching it, but they're lingering there. And that's often some interesting opportunities. Another one that came up in my scam was ABMD, ABOMED. Now this is, I think they make some kind of heart um, like pacemaker. So they make cardiac you know, medical devices. Had a very bullish earnings report not that long ago. I think this this here, and then it pulled back, held the 50-day. It's very interesting here because it's pulling back and holding this high. And again, it's touching the 21-day exponential moving average. And you have an inside day and an outside day. All those things suggest that you know this had this pullback. And, and what we're looking for with candlesticks is for this short-term bearishness to pause and an inside day, outside day, that would actually indicate that this bearishness is paused and the longer term opportunity, longer term trend could be reasserting itself. Um, another one is City, City Group, um, basically straddling the 50 day moving average, the 21 day moving average, and the 200 day moving average. All these coming together with an outside day and an inside day. This stock has gone nowhere since January. So this really squeezing together here, it's kind of interesting. Um, Decker, this one also recently hit that 50 day moving average. And some of the tools we're gonna to show you, you know, finds these sort of opportunities like when they're down here. And then Under Armour, this has a hammer and an inside day, this one popped up. So I'm just kind of show you those. Now let's go back to the presentation. So candlesticks clearly show a range of price action. As most of you guys probably know, the body shows the open and the close. Um, and, um, for, for the price of for the day. When, when your candlestick is hollow, it means that the close is above the open. And when it's solid, it means that the close that it closed below the open. So ho hollow is more bullish and solid is more bearish. The wicks show the high and the low. And it works on all different con sort of intervals, intraday, daily, weekly, and monthly. So when you look on TradeStation and you're setting up a chart, let's just very quickly open a new um, you know workspace, go to a new chart, You'll notice I always use this kind of candlestick chart, but if you might, you might not have it looking like this for you. So say you had like a line chart or something, you want to go to style, you know, so you know, how do I get candlesticks from this? You just go to style and then you go to candle with trend. You want candle with trend because what it will do is it will color based on whether the price is up or down. Um, and that's, you know, important because sometimes you might have a stock, uh, you know, a, a moment when in this case, for example, You'll notice that this is a hollow, so it, it closed above its open, but it was still, the overall change for the day was negative, so it's colored red. So that's what it means when it says candlestick with trend. All right. So the first pattern I want to look at is um, you know, a doji. A doji is essentially when you have um, a big swing to the upside and the downside. But then it closes little change from, from its open. So it opens at a level, it swings up, it swings down, and then it closes at the same point. So, so there are some interesting patterns of that. This can indicate that a short-term move is ending. And wait a second, let me make this go away. 
can indicate that a short-term move um, is ending and um, you could see the longer term trend continue. So let's take a look, for example, at Amazon. And there's two interesting dojis here. Now, remember I said that these yellow crosses show the dojis. This is a doji at the bottom right here on August 20th. And again, back here on June 7th. Advanced Micro Devices had this interesting doji right here um, on July 21st, actually it was on July 20th, right before it jumped. And then also GameStop had one of the most epic dojis I've ever seen, um, which was on March 10th, right here. See that gold, that, that yellow cross right here. Now, if you actually look at this, let me just zoom in a little so you can see just how, how massive this really was. Um, you can zoom in. You can see that it had this, it opened, it had this huge swing in either direction. And basically the price was not able to go back above that or, you know, for a long time, it remained inside of that doji for a long time. So this is really a classic example of a doji being a reversal pattern. It had this huge spike, this massive, you know, swing, and then that was it. It was over. And we actually wrote an article uh, back at the time on Market Insights um, about some of these crazy candles that we saw in a stock like, um, like GameStop. So that's a, a use of dojis. Next, let's look at the kicker pattern. This is like a false breakdown or a false breakout. Now, I should just say that right now, there I've not seen a lot of kickers for a while here. And I think one of the reasons is because um, the market has been, um, you know, over the summer, um, just kind of drifting to a certain extent. And we haven't seen um, a lot of the strong names selling off and holding and very often you're going to see it when you have a good name that is going through a period of a few um, you know, a certain amount of kind of weakness it hammers down um, and then buyers step in so you see a move in one direction that is rejected the next day it's bullish when you close at the low and then you have a big hollow bar up the next day and then vice versa when it's bearish you close at the high and then immediately you reject down with a big solid you know bearish bar so look at Tesla, for example. This is one, like I said, I had to look back and I took this one from a previous you know, um, time because I haven't seen many kickers recently. So if you look back at Tesla, back here in September of last year, go to my little magnifying glass. In fact, before I even do that, let's just, there's more history over here. So my magnifying glass. You can see that this right here on September, um, 8th of 2020, this was a kicker. It goes plunging down to this low and immediately comes back with a green bar. The fact that it occurred at th this level here, these old highs and the 50 day moving average just gives it even greater credence. But this was a classic kicker and we wrote about it on the time on Market Insights. Um, another one occurred in Facebook. Let's see, in Facebook back in January. This one occurred, and this is an interesting one where you see the stock had basically been just paused for about eight months. And then we go to like January 14th, right here. Right here, this, this was your kicker pattern on this one. When basically the stock goes diving down and then it comes jolting right back. Now, it's important to realize that kickers are not an exact pattern. It's not always gonna be exactly a gap up. Some people will say that you need to see this, it goes down and then it immediately gaps up the next day. What matters is, is that it rejects the false breakdown. That's really the essence of what a kicker is. When you see it come down, it closes at the low and then it defies it and comes back. Um, that shows that, the, um, that there was not an acceptance of the low price and that's a reversal pattern we're looking for. So now you have a hammer. This um, is when you have um, a bearish move to a certain extent when the stock's been trending in a bearish direction and then it closes near the high. And then what it does is it opens at a certain level, it tests down and then it comes back up and it basically closes around the high of the day. And that is a potential bullish reversal pattern. So an example of that one occurred in Micron on July 27th. This is a hammer in Micron right here, this candle right here, the stock had been coming down. And this was a hammer as well. You see, well, you can see from the candlestick, it opens at a certain level. 
It opens at a certain level, it probes all the way down here, and then it comes back and closes nearer to the high. And then there, then you have the reversal to the upside. And then there are some other examples here. Um, like for example, Goldman Sachs had a really strong hammer right here um, on, um, on when was this? This was back on July 19th. So I'm going to keep moving because I don't want to uh, fall behind because I want to show you to do the scanning. But this is a hammer. And then basically you have a shooting star. I mean, you can look at these examples yourself, but this is just the opposite. When it probes up to a high level, fails to hold, and then comes down. GameStop actually had one of those on June 8th. Just very quickly, you can see here, um, this was a shooting star. This pattern right here, it, go, it, it opens, it goes all the way up toward 350 and then it man it closes back down at like 303 that is a shooting star and as you notice you have a continuation of the downside after so you, for a shooting star you have a short-term uptrend the shooting star and then the reversal which in this case because it's up the reversal means it goes down okay so what we're using here in the transition platform is uh, we're using indicators and we're using show me's an indicator and they're in different sections of of the different tools so an indicator always shows a value on every bar, like the 50 day moving average on any chart, you're always gonna have that moving average there. Uh, Bollinger bands will always plot, parabolic SAR, those will always plot, but show me is only plot when an event occurs, like a hammer, a doji, or an inside or outside day. So for example, you know this, this uh, yellow doji doesn't appear all the time. It only appears when a doji occurs, but the moving average is an indicator, so it always occur, um, appears. And we're going to be using this for radar screen, chart analysis, and scanner. Um, radar screen, um, well, well, let me show first scanner. Um, these are two different tools that are really well used, you know, complementary to each other. The good thing about scanner is it finds um, events after they happen. It scans everything across the whole universe of symbols. And the drawback is um, it can be slow to run it. The good thing about radar screen is it does real-time alerting. But the drawback is, is that it, you have to give it your list of symbols. And another drawback when you're using alerts with it is that it can throw off a huge number of alerts um, if, you, um, you know, if you're not careful with it. So sometimes it can give you like thousands of alerts if you set it to alert continuously. So you want to be careful of that. All right. So let's start now with Scanner. Um, the first thing I want to show you. All right. So let's go back here to, my, to this workspace. I'm going to minimize this back down. Let's see if I have some more questions. Please show how to get the yellow cross to show where the dojis are. If you are using the workspace that I gave you, the dojis are turned on already. If not, you would go to studies, add study. And then, like I said, it's a, it's a show me. So you go to show me, and then you're going to go to um, C, which means candle, doji. It's under show me. Okay. Let me just make sure here. I'm going to reshare really quickly this um, this link in case anyone is missing the zip file. Like I said, remember the zip file. You want to make sure you load the ELD before you open the workspace. Otherwise, there are certain things that will it'll erase out of the workspace if you don't have them loaded yet. So load the ELD first. Okay. So this is scanner. This tool right here is scanner, and I'm going to just make it bigger. And let's just this is an old scan I have. I'm going to just create a new scan. And so this one is going to be called scanning for actives actually before i do that this is this is a radar screen i told you about now this is what i did to find things like ua um you'll go to this candlesticks button make sure you're in the candlesticks tab of this top left of radar screen and what this will do is if you look for example um if, if i click on this on hammer you'll notice uaa there it is under armor right there so that's how I found that hammer, like I mentioned before the webinar today. It's interesting that the 200-day moving average as well. So this right now currently has the entire S&P 500 loaded. I can just go through now and I can find inside and outside candles, um, different members of the S&P. If it plots a value, like I said, this is a show me, so it will only plot a value if it actually has one. You'll notice that a lot of these are blank because they don't have inside or outside days. Um, so AES, Fox, um, you know, media, um, this has an outside day. You can see it over here as well. All right, so that's the S&P 500. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you one of the first things I like to do is I like to scan for active symbols. This is not exactly part of candlesticks, but it's a really useful thing, and I always like to, to use it. So let's just um, right now add, and let's just call this, you know, find actives. All right. 
And I'm going to go to all stocks. And I already have these things preloaded, but I'm going to just erase them and then show you how to do this. I, I, I had this thing with um, setting default. So if I go right now to um, volume, I'm going to go to volume. And if you look right now on page 12 of the PDF, this is all their volume, average, 10 day. I'm going to set it to greater than 500,000 with no commas. And then I'm going to set market capitalization greater than 5,000, which is 5 billion. You don't have to set it to this if you don't want. This is just a basic thing. Um, I like this because it allows me to find those companies that are um, that are popular, that are not necessarily in the big indexes. Now I'm going to go to this other thing called indicator. And now I'm going to go to, um, it's going to be called um, volume all options. Now here's one of the things you want to be careful of. This has two outputs. It shows today's option volume and an average option volume. You're going to change it. You'll notice that you have the main indicator here and then it's going to have if it has multiple outputs, there's going to be a second box that pops up. So volume, all average, and I'm going to say greater than um, 10,000. And I'm going to hit run. So now well, the, what this is going to do is this is going to now give me a list of stocks that trade at least 500,000 shares a day. that are at least 5 billion of market cap and that um, trade at least 10,000 options contracts a day. So this is going to get rid of some of your annoying stocks like, I mean, utility stocks. I don't think there's a single utility stocks, maybe new era energy, but none of the others trade anything. You've got a lot of companies in the S&P 500, you know, that, that just, they're not active for trading. And then you have a bunch of cool companies that trade a lot that are not in the S&P. So by having this scan set up, you can um, basically, um, you know, always be going back and, um, and finding those new names that are getting more active. So as this is building, what I'm gonna now do is, I'm gonna go back to this radar screen right here. I'm gonna do select A and I'm gonna hit delete. And I, I just erased the whole S&P 500. If I wanna add it back in, I go to data and I go to add symbol list S&P 500 and it will populate in. But I wanna let this scan run. It's almost done. All right, let's see if any questions. You load this on the apps. I don't understand your question. Where do I get the PDF? The PDF is inside of the zip file. So there's a link there with this candlesticks technical zip. Um, and inside of that, there's three files, like I said. Um, this is the, this is the, um, the PowerPoint, it's a PDF. This is the ELD you want to load first, and this is a, the workspace you want to load last. All right, boom. And now create a list for me of the most active underliers. Not surprisingly, Apple's at the top of the list. I can just do now. Let's just make sure it's fewer than 1,000. It is because um, it can only take 1,000 um, contract, 1,000 uh, symbols. So I'm going to just do a, a copy. I'm going to go back over to the S&P here in my radar screen. I erased it, and I'm going to paste these in. And now I have a list of super active underliers. And now I can start seeing patterns on these. And you'll notice some of these companies um, are not in the S&P 500. Um, companies like Snap, you know, that's interesting because that one's not in the S&P 500. And here we have an outside bar in this name today. We can just start looking down the list and finding some interesting stuff. Now, I'm, I'm going to get to this at the end of the webinar, but we also have our MA tools over here that we can do fun stuff with that as well. But let's keep moving now with Scanner. All right. Now we're going to go on to slide. Um, we're going to go into slide 13 and we're going to show how do you find hammers. Now, this might not find any hammers. Um, Scanner has does not always find a lot of stuff. And that's really one of the reasons I wanted to show you this active symbols because radar screen for a lot of these things works better. It doesn't always work better. Like it's good to always just be bouncing back and forth and looking at all of them um, because sometimes just having a bunch of stocks you're interested in on radar screen and waiting for stuff, stuff to pop up can be more um, useful. Than, um, than changing stuff um, in, um, um, in Scanner all the time. All right, so I have this list here. I can set this to default. And now what I can do is I can create a new one. And now I can say, let's, let's call this one um, Hammers. All right. And now I'm going to do the same thing, all stocks. And now you'll see that, that these three criteria are here, which makes things a lot easier for me. So now I'm going to go to 
down here. Remember I said there's indicators and show me's. So like that, the thing of finding the options volume, that was an indicator, but now we're gonna go to show me and we're gonna go to, it's called C Hammer Hanging Man. And now you'll notice again that it has two outputs, it, hammer or hanging man. So it set the hammer, that's good. And this one returns just a Boolean, a true or false. So you'll notice in this one that I can't, it's not offering me these things, you see. The only thing it has is true or false. Nothing else will, will work for this. So a lot of you guys probably know what Boolean values are um, from in computing, which basically is a true or a false value. So a hammer, that's kind of cool. But you know what? We want to find stocks that have more than just a hammer. So this is where it gets kind of interesting. Now we're going to add indicator. We're going to add moving averages, and that's going to allow us to find the trend. So now we're combining trend with candlestick analysis. So we're going to go to moving average. Let me just do it. moving average one line. It's MOV one line. MOV, sorry. MOV one line. Now we're going to also add over here. We're going to say greater than. Same thing. Move average one line. Okay. So now you see this little button here. You need to open up this button. And this is really the key thing. And I cannot overemphasize this. A lot of times when I can't get scanner to work, it's because I didn't open up this little button, this little plus sign. Um, so this is now very important. You're going to notice here that there's two different moving averages. Moving average greater than moving average. This They're both set by default to nine periods. You can now change this one to 50 and this one to 200. So now this is going to find stocks where the 50 day is over the 200 day simple moving average, and it has a hammer, which basically means it's in more of a longer term uptrend and it has a hammer. So let's run that. I have no idea what it's going to show us. You'll see right here that it's cranking away. It's thinking. All right. Now, while it's doing that, because I don't want to slow it down, let's go back just really quickly to this one called Find Actives. And if I click on it, you can see here, so you can set the schedule. You can schedule this to run, for example, every day at like 8 p.m. I actually, this is something that, that I suggest um, you, know, you do. You'll notice in my scanner, I have a whole series of scans that are set up, and they're set up to run all the time on a schedule. So a lot of these you want to set up to run on a schedule. That way, when you come and look at your computer, they're ready to go. All right, let's see. Hammers gave us no results, unfortunately. Like I said, sometimes the, um, the, the, these don't work super well on scanner. Sometimes they do. The cool thing, though, is, is that we do actually have over here, like we dumped our list into here. So now we can use, um, we can still use radar screen and we can find stocks that have, um, that have hammer patterns and this, these start popping up. So a lot of these with hammers, they, see, you'll notice the 50 day is under the 200 day. So we don't know where it, um, where it rejected, where it failed. Um, but anyway, that's how you set it up. Now, the next one, let's just do very quickly with this one. The next one we're going to do is shooting stars. We're going to just go back now to hammers. And what we can just do with hammers, if we go to our criteria, and we can just actually change this just to not to not to waste too much time. We can just remember we're in show me's. And now what I can just do is I can change um, the show me to shooting star. Okay. And then set the true. Now this time we want to find the opposite. We want to find stocks where the 50 day is under the 200 day. So now we're just going to flip this the other way. And I'll just run it again. I'm just looking at your questions and I see if I missed anything else. Thank you for the folks who are helping explain things to people. I, I very much appreciate it. Can you say the order to load the zip file slowly? What I'm saying is when you load the zip file, you want to load the, the ELD, this one first, the easy language document. You want to load that one first. It'll bring up this dialog box. Right. And after you have that, then you want to open 
your your workspace okay this one also didn't give us anything this time but still sometimes it does find some let's see if it even found any here see in this case it didn't find any shooting stars let's just keep moving sometimes like like i said these are ones you want to just check and you're never really sure exactly where, where you're going to get results but the one thing i do want to mention it's interesting you can actually see that these are scheduled tasks i have i forgot they're running right now i'm going to actually cancel them um, these are my own personal ones that i'm not using in this webinar because um i don't want them to to interfere and slow down my computer right now so let's just keep moving um all right we are on slide going to slide 15. other candlestick patterns that, that you can discover outside bars inside bars and dojis um, another thing that is can be very interesting if you want to take some time to, to, to mess around with it is that one of the things you can do um, is you can let's go to show me you can change this now to something like inside bar and now what you can do is you can change the time frame so you can make this go to weekly so this allows you potentially this could find stocks that you know outside weeks and then at the same time let's change this to 50 day greater than the 200 day and what this will do is this allows you to use weekly data with daily data and you can also do intraday like 15 minute and all that stuff as well if you want which can be pretty interesting i don't think that's i don't think intraday is very very useful for this context but it's pretty cool to be able to do weekly time frames with daily time frames. Sometimes that's not always the easiest thing to do in a single scan. So we can run that. That'll probably bring back some results. Um, okay. All right, now another thing that is interesting, um, is the use of parabolic SAR as a counter trend indicator. Um, now, I want to go and show you um, some of these other um, tools that I have created because I have this other tool here that is honestly something I'm quite proud of. Go to MA Tools, you can see it in radar screen. I have two special indicators I'm giving you guys that I created. One of them is MA cross bar sense, and it's actually called SMA EMA. I know it's not the greatest name, but what it what it means is it can do simpler exponential moving averages. So what this is going to do is this is going to, in this case, I have it set to simple and exponential. You go to studies, you can see I can put in eight, it's set to the eight and the 21 exponential exponential. I could change this fast. I, you know, I could do like 50 day, 200 days, simple, simple, and it would look for how long since the stock had the 50 cross over the 200 or cross under. But this gives you a huge amount of information in one place, because what it does is if the number is positive, it means that the eight day exponential is above the 21 day exponential, like for Apple. It also tells you that it's been above for 65 candles. So you can see that cross, the blue and the gold. This cross occurred all the way back here, like in early June. And it's 65 candles ago. And that basically tells you not only that it's above, but how long since it happened. So we can look for things that recently had a cross by looking for numbers between say zero and five. And we're gonna start finding names like Starbucks recently had the cross. McDonald's recently had the crossover. You can just look down the list and it will show you. And then the negative number simply means that it's crossed under. So that the, the 50 day, the, the, the eight day exponential is under. So that's how this tool works. And we're gonna use that tool now in Scanner. So now let's call this, I'll call this one um, SAR with crossovers. Let me just check, make sure I'm not missing any questions. Nico, let me know if I'm missing any big questions. There's a lot of, of, of things in the chat. Okay, it looks like I'm not. If I do miss anything, please repeat. Put it like in caps or put an asterisk or something because I hate missing questions. I try and help everyone. Yeah, I think you've okay. done pretty good so far, but if I catch any, I'll, I'll let you know. Thank you. All right, good. So once again, I'm going to go to all stocks. And you'll notice that um, it loads this set again. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is um, we're going to be using parabolic SAR, which is built in. And what you know we're going to do here is is that we're going to have the um, we're going to have parabolic SAR under the price, which means that the stock has been trending up in the short term. But then we're also going to have recent bearish crosses um, in the in the eight to the down um, eight versus the twenty one exponential. Okay, so indicator parabolic SAR. And I just hit PA to jump to that if you're curious. Now you'll notice that once again, this one has various outputs. So make sure you're using the right thing. Um, we're gonna go to um, PARCL. And that's actually the values of these blue dots. This is parabolic SAR, this, this over here. This is an interesting indicator. Like I personally think that it's, um, I, I'm not a huge fan of it for what it's kind of like intended to do. I like it as a counter trend indicator. Um, because I find that very often by the time it gives you a signal, it's, it's kind of too late very often in my view, but that can be good if you're late, if you're looking for the counter trend, cause you can actually be looking for parabolic SAR to go the other way. So in this case, you want parabolic SAR. Remember when it's below, it means the thing is trending up. So we want parabolic SAR less than. And now it brings up this other series of values, price last. That means you're gonna find stuff where the, where the blue dots are, are under the price, which means price is trending up. And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna look for cases of that happening when you recently, when you had a bearish cross um, in the eight day versus the 21 day exponential. So now we're gonna go to our MA cross days since. Maybe we should have a contest to come up with a better name for this indicator. MA cross, <laughs> MA bars, uh, MA cross bars since SMA, EMA. And then we're going to go to less than minus five. And the reason is, is because we want it to have happened more than five bars ago. And we want it to be negative. We want it to be the eight is under the, 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 the fast is under the slow. Now we also want to just confirm, always do this. Always confirm that you're using the right values. In this case, it is by default, it does eight and 21 day. And if you're curious about how to do that, you know, you can take a, one of our easy language classes um, and we'll show you how to actually code things like this. But in this case, it by default goes to eight and 21. So that's okay. So now I'm going to hit run and I have no idea what this is going to give us. Hopefully it gives us something good. So what this does is, is this finds downtrends with the EMAs and then a counter trend move with the parabolic SAR. Okay. So as that's running, I want to mention that radar screen supports um, volatility based alerts like Bollinger Bands and Keltner channels. It also supports moving average based alerts. Radar screen supports simple price and price change alerts. Now, again, we're using the radar screen tool. So let's go over and show you how to do that. Now, you'll notice in this radar screen I have right here, again, notice it has three tabs. This first one is our, our you know, our candlestick um, show me's and alerts. You know, this is the one that found outside bars and inside bars and things like that. The next one I have set to alerts. We haven't done this one yet, so let me show you how it works. You can set alerts on these different indicators. The most simple one of all is last price. So, for example, we're looking at, let's look at Google or Alphabet. That one's not even very good. Let's find one that's a little more. Well, let's see, maybe this one. Right, let's see. Where's a good level? Maybe we want to think of a pullback on this one. If it pulls down under 2760-ish, because that's basically where we have this high here. You know, if it gets down here, this is an area where we might start to get interested under 2760. So you go to last, you double click on it. And then you're going to set your lower alert. 2760. That's simple. That's the most simple alert of all. And then you want to just make sure alerts are turned on. Go to enable alert and hit OK. And now when it goes down there, it's going to trigger an alert for me. The alert will also pop up, just so you know, in your message center, which is under messages, message center. It's under view, messages, message center. <laughs> and I have all kinds of alerts here. That when I was setting up my, um, you know, for this webinar, it triggered a whole bunch of alerts. But this is how it will, they will come up. Um, okay. Now, 
if something moves a certain amount, um, I don't use this very often, but you can. And you simply go in there and you do the same thing. You're going to set the input. You're going to set, um, you know, if it moves, you know, down a certain amount or up a certain amount. And then you can also set it. Now, this this shows up as like as integers, even though this displays as percentage. Just don't get confused. If you wanted to have at least 2% down to minus 2 as an integer, not a decimal, and it still works. Um, alerts, right? Now, if bookings.com, which is like, what's that called? That's, um, you know, the, the, the travel site. Um, then basically, if it moves down at least 2%, it's going to trigger alert. Now, interesting stuff. Keltner channels. Um, these are Keltner channels. I like Keltner channels. I find them to be pretty useful um, in terms of they do often a pretty good job of, of spotting. In my opinion, they do a pretty good job of spotting levels where um, you know things have moved about as far as they are going to move at any point in time. Um, so you know you can look at say for example you're watching Tesla and you're just drifting around and you're like you know where do I want to go long Tesla like right now Tesla say you want to be long Tesla but you're like wow we're at the top of a range you'll notice how the Keltner channels does a pretty decent job of drawing that channel. So how do you know when it's going to happen? Let's just go up here and we'll go to Keltner channel. And now this one you can just do for the whole for the whole list, or you could do it just for Tesla. And then you just click on this, and you go to Studies, Edit, and then you just go to Alerts, Enable Alert, and it will alert if it touches the actual channel. And these these um, values here control the the variables that control the width of the channel. You can learn about Keltner channels. So the great thing about this is you can just have a big list of stocks you're interested in. Like remember we took this list of our active underliers. I can just copy that. Let's take it over here to our alerts. We'll just select all, erase, and then paste this in. And then we can go to Keltner channel and let's just see. Let's just turn on the alert for the whole thing. I can right click on this, go to alert, enable alert once, and let's see. Boom! It just dumped out a whole bunch of alerts on me here. So let's see what it found. It found an alert on, and you'll notice where it turns red, that means that it that, that one has an alert. So Broadcom, see this touched the top? So that one had an alert. Can look for, see where it's red, it means it triggered. DoorDash triggered the top of the alert, because it, 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 the top of the channel. So that's how this works as well. Bollinger Bands, I don't have it on my chart. You guys probably know Bollinger Bands. They work exactly the same way um, in terms of the alerting. Uh, they're calculated very differently, but they, they produce a similar outcome. Um, and they basically just show like a range of motion based on um, historical volatility. Um, and if you set the alert to it, you will also see, if I just go to, you know, like enable alert once, Boom, it just pulled up Tilray. All right, that one that one triggered on somewhere on a Bollinger Band that I don't have set. If I want to set a Bollinger Band, what I can just do is um, I can go here to studies. I'm going to add study, Bollinger Band, Bollinger Bands, add. And then what I can actually do to keep things simple, I can go to studies, edit studies, and I can disable just for this my Keltner channel, turn it off by hitting status. Now I'm looking at Bollinger Bands. Let's look at something else that triggered. FedEx triggered a Bollinger Band alert today. You can see it touched that bottom of the Bollinger Band. So that's another way to set advanced alerts. All right, now we have two other ways to set alerts. Simple moving average and exponential moving average. The simple moving average is just a moving average one line. It's actually the same indicator we were using in Scanner previously. It has an alerting function where if, if the price touches the moving average, then it will trigger an alert. So in this case, let's just check. You want to make sure I have this set. This is set to nine days. Let's set it to 50 days because, you know, that's a nice, simple one. Everyone looks at. Boom. And now it's going to show the 50 day moving averages for all these stocks. So, for example, you know, for Adobe, we have 63370. If I hover over here, you'll see that's exactly where my red line is. All right. So it's working. Now let's go here and let's go to alerts. And they will alert once, boom, a bunch of things came up like Marathon Petroleum, MRO. Let's take a look at that. Sure enough, it crossed over its 50-day moving average. This shows crossings. You'll notice yesterday it closed under, and then the price went above, and that triggers an alert. LAM Research. 
price was under, it crossed above. And then the other one is exponential moving average. This is actually a custom one because the exponential moving average on TradeStation only shows an alert when the moving average changes direction. So I created one for you guys that basically, um, you know, does the exact same thing as simple moving average, but it does it for exponential. So let's just go to this and make sure we're looking at something new. So I have this set to that 21 day and I can do the same thing with this. I can go to alert, enable alert once and boom, it brought up a whole bunch of things here with alerts. Like for example, let's look at Adobe came up and that's because it was under the gold line. It went above the gold line. So these are um, ways you can set the advanced alerts. All right. And now I want to actually, wait, let's go back. We didn't look at our, our output. Here's our look, SAR crossovers. Let's see what it gives us. American Express was triggered. You can see in this case, you can see the eight day has been under the 21 day. So it's been trending downward. And the, and the, um, the parabolic SAR is down on to the lower side. So that's showing up as a potential um, bearish signal. In my view, that is not necessarily something that is most useful um, because this has actually been stabilizing here, um, holding this level. It would have been more useful from, from a move like this, which in this case, it didn't trigger. But sometimes you can you know use it for things like this. The energy stocks right now, I think, are also... Um, it's interesting. I've been writing stuff. One of my articles right now on Market Insights is actually about what's happening in the energy space, which is kind of interesting as we go into the winter. So this is, um, you know, these are just some of the results we're getting from here. Um, and you, know, you can see how useful it may or may not be. These today, these exact ones are giving me right now don't look the most useful to me, but I've had it other times and this will find some very interesting patterns. Um, and so that's kind of what we're, um, what we can try and do with this. Now, let's just go back to my advanced, these other custom moving average tools I wanted to explain. Um, now, these were included in that zip file I gave you. The EMA test, it highlights when price is touching an exponential moving average and the direction is color coded. So now this is the final tab right here, my MA tools. All right. And we can do the same thing. Let's take our list of active underliers. Let's just copy. Copy that. Go over here. Erase. I probably have the whole S&P there. Let's paste this in. And now what this does is, is this is going to find things that have um, that are touching, for example, the eight-day exponential moving average. And what you'll notice it does is it color codes. If the moving average is rising, then it's going to be green with a plus. And that allows us to sort it. Because by having the plus or minus, it will actually allow us to sort the direction. Um, it does a, a calculation where if it's an eight period, it then if it's rising at least one quarter of the period, which in this case would be two sessions, then it would paint it green. Um, so these are stocks that, for example, are touching the exponential moving average and the exponential moving average is rising. Um, then you have the 21 day exponential moving average, um, same sort of um, you know, potential trend following tool, like Amazon, for example, that's an interesting one. Um, I haven't looked at these recently. They're just interesting to kind of see what's coming up. And then we have our 50-day simple moving average. Apple today pulled back to its 50-day moving average for the first time since, what, mid-June? That's interesting. So very often when I'm looking for different things to write about and some of the things happening in the market, I just look down this list and I look for things that, um, you know, that have pulled back to you know, like the 50-day moving average and you can do it um, with this right here. Now, this is one of the tools I'm most fond of. I want to show you now. And this is days since MA test. It plots the number of days since price touched a simple or an exponential moving average. And then it gives again, positive or negative based on whether or not it's above or below. So in this case, what this is gonna do is, this is going to tell us things that recently tested the 50 day moving average, which is interesting because I find that very often a stock will linger. Like for example, I wrote this article, which I will share with you guys right here. And also I did this thing for, um, you know, for trading view about energy stocks, but there's some very interesting things happening now with, with energy as we go into the winter. Um, I'd encourage you to read this article, um, has a lot of information about some stocks you probably haven't thought of for a long time. 
But there's some very interesting dynamic now with natural gas demand. And, you know, I remember 15 years ago when they were talking about exporting natural gas on tanker ships. And this year, it's actually, this is actually coming to fruition now. And honestly, you could probably, you know, read the Wall Street Journal and things all day and no one will tell you this. But this is now we're set for liquefied natural gas to be a bigger source of exports of gas than pipelines. This year, it's just starting. It's very interesting. Europe is basically starving for gas right now. And there's a few companies that can benefit from it. I find it very interesting. Um, so anyway, look at a company like ConocoPhillips. So here it is at the 50-day moving average. It basically, the opportunity in a name like this was potentially this pullback. But this was two days after. So this would have shown up as a, as a value of two right here with my days since. Look at con Now it's three, right? Because it's the day after. But if I had been looking for ideas, look, you'll see a bunch of energy stocks. They're coming off the 50-day. This is very often where they're kind of going to be giving you this opportunity when it's had a recent test of that moving average. Um, and so I think this is a, a very interesting indicator. Um, and I, I hope you guys can see the value of it. And the nice thing about it also is if you right click on it, you go to studies, edit, and then you can change it depending on if you want a 50 day simple or um, an exponential. All those are um, you can change. Just make sure you spell exponential correctly because it's. Um, it requires that to be exactly right. Also, these, like as I showed you when we were doing the parabolic SAR, this also works. You can also use these indicators in, in scanner. Okay. Can we utilize this for futures products? Yes, it will work for any symbol that you have data on. As long as as long as your chart can draw moving averages, it will work for this. Great. If you like trading view, you can do some of the analysis. Yeah, you know, I do. I, I actually create, I code stuff over in trading view and I'm going to actually be creating one soon. Maybe if you look at our trading view ideas, see, we publish this about energy ETF. I mean, honestly, it's funny, you know, people like they just don't pay attention to XLE, but honestly, it's the best. And I've done this in other webinars. It's the best performer this year. The XLE is outperforming technology. It's outperforming all the others. It's just been left for dead. It had a, obviously a terrible 2020 with COVID. Um, and I would just very briefly just mention to me, XLE here, let's take a very quick look at this chart because you have this 20, 200 moving average coming up. But look at this level here around 56. Um, if we go to um, you know, the weekly chart, this level around 56 was very important back here. But from my perspective right now with what's happening, you know, a retest back up to 56, you know, seems like it's not an unreasonable thing to expect given this situation. And a breakout through that level, when you consider how much the sector has been neglected and you consider what's happening with the supply demand dynamic. And if you go to the EIA website, if you look at some of these articles, if you like Google, you know, natural gas inventories, was, I think a Fox business article a couple of days ago, if you look at oil inventories, just today, they were lower than expected. Oil inventories today fell, I think, 5 million barrels, um, which was like more than expected. Last night, the API number um, you know, went down more than expected. Um, so it's very interesting what's happening right now. And I just think that this could be, this has been, um, you know, just a sector that has been coming back from the dead. And um, it could be, um, you know, an interesting opportunity here, especially this opportunity for, you know, push back toward this kind of 54, I mean, this 56 level. I, I view this as a very important chart level. Um, and I've written about it a lot. Um, and we, when we, when we got up here, we had articles at the time basically saying like, okay, that's, that's resistance. And, but that was, you know, three or four months ago. And now we're going into a time of year that's seasonally positive for energy. So I wanted to just mention that. Um, and some of the other, you know, webinars we've done, we've shown ways that you can use radar screen and some of the different tools in the trade station platform to go through and assess the strength of different, um, different sectors. And in fact, just to show you some of the other stuff, if you're on Market Insights and you go to Education Platform, you can see some of these different webinars that we've done. Um, Jesus does webinars as well. He did this one here on Fibonacci. You might want to check that out. Um, the last one I did 
Um, I was showing you how to do so with fundamental analysis. Um, and then um, some of these different things here of um, analyzing, you know, the market, um, trying to, there were other ones I did about, you know, keeping up with any market. But if you just look through these things on platform, some of these different webinars here, there's going to be ones that actually show you how to use the spider funds, other industry ETFs to assess strength in the market. And then I even have in some of these a download when I have an Excel file with all these underliers, with all these stocks. So you can be, well, I'm looking at XOP, which is the energy drilling ETF. And then you can drill into the ETF pulling up a list of like 20 stocks in the ETF and then scanning on those. So that's something, if you look at some of these, um, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to see where we had done this because I am, um, how to keep up with any market, this one. Look at this one I did back in May. This one is worth checking out. All right, so it's great to talk to everyone. Um, I think those are all the questions we had. Um, this will be posted actually on on YouTube, um, live on YouTube um, in a few days, and we'll have it up on Market Insight soon. Um, and don't forget also, you can sign up for the Market Insights um, newsletter, uh, and that goes out um, every week or so. And check out these ideas on TradingView. Let me just also share this with you over here. Great to talk to everyone. Um, and uh, the next Art of Trade session I'm going to be doing um, is going to be in mid October. We're going to show you some of the interesting tools for the. Um, some of the interesting tools for earnings season. There's a way you can pull all kinds of cool um, earnings news into um, earnings dates um, and information um, into the platform. I'm just looking at my calendar. It's in mid-October. It is on October 13th. Same time. Hope to see you guys then. Have a great day and I'll see everyone soon. Take care.